Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be checking out a new mod that is out there right now for the Game Boy Color. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can actually mod your Game Boy Colors to have backlit screens. This is one that was done um, by a guy called Ben Venn. Basically, he made a ribbon cable. Um, ben Venn is a very um, well-known modder in the sort of modding and Game Boy community. Um, he made a ribbon cable where you could plug in the screen from an AGS 101 uh, Game Boy Advance SP and put it into a, um, a Game Boy Color. So as you can see, uh, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Now this awesome aluminium shell was made by a gentleman called Nick over from Boxy Pixel. Nick decided to make a, um, a shell where basically you can just drop all of the components in. It's even got a rechargeable battery. Obviously that's a bit of an extra. Um, and then you pretty much, you, all you've got to do is just solder. You don't have to worry about um, milling shells and stuff. So fast forward to today and I've received this little white box from Dragon Box. It's a really, really cool website. They've got loads of mods over there. And uh, yeah, basically it's like a, a European website. So um, they do actually ship worldwide, but it's a European website. So if you order from them, expect some slightly longer um, shipping times. This isn't sponsored or anything. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to the guys over at Dragonbox for sending this out to me and my friend John for telling me that this thing exists. So this is a McWill drop-in backlit replacement screen. Now I should also say that uh, Ben Venn has actually uh, developed also a drop-in screen which basically uses the same sort of technology so it's going to be interesting to see how they compare and you better know that I'm going to do that um, after I show the video installing Ben Venn's. So uh, yeah, although today's video we're going to be taking a look at McWills. So it says um, that it does actually involve two um, wires that are going to need to be soldered. It says solder pin 1 and pin 4 of the oscillator. Okay. Um, pin 2 is a ground and can be soldered directly to the ground of the Game Boy Color mainboard. So, right. As you can see, it says required materials. Game Boy Color mod kit. We've got that. Small oscillator. We've got that. And three small wires, about five centimeters to two inches of length. So, that's going to be interesting. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and take out our uh, Game Boy Color and we're going to pretty much just get straight into modding this and uh, see the results and compare them at the end. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the six tri-wing screws from the back of the Game Boy Color housing. Once you've removed those, go ahead and grab a Phillips screwdriver and remove the further three screws. Next up, release the ribbon cable from its connector and pull the board away. Removing the screen is very simple and can be done by gently twisting the shell. Once this has been done, lift up the adhesive pad as we will need the room for the new screen. Cut and strip four wires and tin all of the ends. Take the screen and oscillator out of the package and tin all four points on the back of the oscillator. Then solder a wire to point one and another to point four. This is shown in a diagram on the installation guide. You're going to have to join those wires together and solder them to the capacitor on the board labelled C28. Cover that all up with Kapton tape. Add a wire to pin two and connect this ground point on the GBC board. Insert the new ribbon cable back into the board and solder pin 3 from the oscillator to this point on the LCD board. Lining up the PCB in the board shows what part of the plastic we're going to have to cut out. And do this by scoring the plastic a few times with a knife and snap.
And just like that, we are done. It wasn't too difficult. There was a little bit of intricate soldering. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how the Benven LCD um, compares to the McWill one. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be covering that on the uh, next week. It's probably gonna arrive on Tuesday. So I'll have the video out either Tuesday or Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, how exciting. Um, it feels absolutely incredible to um, backlight my sort of Game Boy Color from when I was younger. Besides the actual soldering part, it was such an easy installation to do. Um, you know, it's pretty much just a case of dropping it in. You obviously have to cut a little bit of plastic up, but... Um, and so you're probably thinking, how does it compare to the AGS 101? How does it look in the dark? Does it have a nice image? What's the quality of the screen like? Well, let's find out. <laughs> So we're looking at about a 300 pound versus a 50 roughly pound uh, Game Boy. So the difference is just absolutely out of this world. If you have a look at it compared to something like a front lit Game Boy Color, I mean, it's just off the scale. It's not even worth a comparison. The brightness right now probably isn't a huge thing to take into consideration because uh, you can get um, cables and uh, ribbon cables which have brightness adjusting um, availability. So I'm gonna sort of hold my um, full comparison until I've got my Benven uh, screen installed. But for now, the difference is insane. It's important to note as well that outside the screen looks just as good as it does inside. Uh, the AGS 101 struggles. The screen is very, very dim. Um, I was outside taking a walk before and I had my sunglasses on and I could see the um, McWill screen with no troubles at all. Uh, however, the LCD from the AGS 101 screen doesn't have a very good viewing uh, outside in the sun. So it's gonna be interesting to, uh, to see sort of battery consumption is going to be as well. Um, one thing I should note is hopefully this video has helped anybody who does want to install one of these themselves, but this guide, although I appreciate that they've included it, it's not fantastic. It doesn't tackle a lot of things that you need to know. It doesn't give any sort of pictures. Obviously it's got diagrams, but there's no pictures of, uh, you know, how do you tuck up the oscillator once it's inside? Where do you put it? Where's the best place to put it? Um, it doesn't say anything about cutting the pins from the back of the cart slot. I don't know, I think maybe this could use a little bit more attention. Um, maybe a, a, an installation guide video they could do. Um, so hopefully if you haven't done it and you wanna do it, then this video can help you. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Again, thank you very much to Dragonbox for sending this out to me. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribe. In fact, well, I haven't you already subscribed. Feel free to check out my hats. The link is in the description as always, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.